to Yorkshire Gamer's first attempt at a uh, video playthrough of a game. And as in the previous introduction video, we're going to look at the Spanish Civil War. And we're going to take a scenario roughly based on uh, the first game in this book, uh, which we mentioned again in the introduction. And uh, it's this game here, game number one, uh, Arrow Through Andalusia. And it's set on August 3rd, 1936 uh, when a nationalist column of um, Spanish Foreign Legion is attacking towards um, a village uh, containing some um, Republican militia who are going to be represented by the POOM, the uh, Communist Militia. Um, so that's the game that we're going to play through. Uh, if you do have this book there's been uh, some slight alterations um, just to make life a little bit easier for me and uh, just change the way that we're, the, the games play for us. Um, but we'll go through the forces in a second. Here's a map of the terrain. We'll look at the table in a second and uh, hope you enjoy this game. So here we go with the table. Uh, I do apologise, there will inevitably be a bit of shaky cam as we move around. Um, but we're looking at the um, nationalist right lines to the right and uh, the Republican lines to the left. So looking at the table, um, we've got a small railway station there with a tiny little bit of railway. Um, that's going to be the main objective for the Spanish Legion to get a train line into uh, Madrid to help with uh, reinforcements and supplies later on in the campaign. Got a few areas of wood, a few areas of uh, broken ground, and then in the centre you can see that we've got a road running through the middle of the table and three buildings. Uh, objective points uh, will be explained shortly. I'll put those up at the end of this little explanation. And um, in the distance, you can see a small hill, a couple of woods, and uh, some trees. There we are looking down the table from the nationalist entry point. Uh, you see the road curving away there, railway uh, in the distance. We've got a six by four table. Um, I've just put it sideways on my 12 by 6 just to um, make life a little bit easier just when it comes to filming etc. And you can see bits and pieces of other stuff in the background from other projects. Uh, but if we just concentrate on the green bit for now. Let's have a look at the table from the Republican side. There we go. Uh, Republican side. You can see that the terrain is closer to the Republican entry point which is again is the road and uh, makes life a little bit difficult for them, they, sorry, a little bit easier for them, but they do have worse troops and worse equipment uh, and worse reinforcement op opportunities. Um, so the advantage to them is that of terrain and hopefully time, depending on how the cards activate. So I'll just hold this here for a second and I'll just put up the objective points um, over the screen as we wait now. So we've had a look at the table and here's the first of the two forces. This is the Republican starting force and uh, I've just laid them out on the table just with their activation cards. Uh, if you're not familiar with how activation cards work we'll, we'll obviously go through that as the game progresses. Uh, but each time these cards are drawn then these units will activate. So we've got a company of Poom Militia with a three figure HQ section. The number of figures in the HQ reflect on how much they can do. Um, we'll see that the very shortly that the nationalist HQs are slightly bigger, and then as the game progresses, we'll see how that affects their ability to rally troops, do orders, move, etc., etc. Uh, the are uh, four ten-man companies of Pooh, and with the Spanish Civil War, we 
um, have the figures armed with the weapons that the figure has and how they shoot and fight will become obvious as the course of the game progresses. Um, we've got one support weapon which is uh, a mortar which uh, may or may not prove useful, let's see. And then um, a couple of single figure snipers uh, who can be extremely useful in this game uh, depending on how confident they are. Uh, but we'll see and after after this we'll go into the reinforcement um, opportunities for the Republicans and as the game progresses I'll show you how the reinforcement system works. But for now that is the Republican force and we'll go and have a look at the Nationalists. So here we have the Nationalist force and again we've got the activation cards laid out on the table apologies just the way the light is there's a little bit of reflection off those and we've got would you believe in february some sunlight coming through the window which is uh, slightly scary um so the nationalists have got a single company of Gardi seville uh, police um all armed with rifles apart from the leader who's got a uh, smg then we've got a company of legion Spanish Foreign Legion. As you can see here, we've got four figures in the command group rather than three, which will, uh, as you'll see as we go, the game goes on, it will give them a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more options when it comes to rallying troops, ordering uh, and moving, etc. And then we've got three um, sections of Legion, two of which have got integrated light machine gun teams one of which is just uh, rifles and uh, oh, the, the sergeant's got a pistol and then support weapons the nationalists have got a armored car which is a UNL 35 uh, which just happened to be the first thing that came out of the box and uh, we've also got a heavy machine gun Reinforcement options for those we'll again talk about at the end of the first phase when I look at reinforcements. So that's the Nationalists. So uh, let's get on and have a look at the first game turn. So there we go, we're, we're set up, we're ready to go. And uh, different people, I've, I've watched a few um, run throughs, different people do it in different ways. I'm going to start off really, really slowly with these rules because obviously. There are a set of rules that we have developed ourselves based on another set, but uh, they, are, they are our own. So there's no immediate book that you can go and have a look at to see what we're doing. So I'm going to go really slowly through the first three stages. Uh, and then as the game moves along, I will speed things up a bit and just highlight the main action. Uh, so it could be quite a long video. I don't know. I've only just started. So let's see how we go. Um, but the first thing to talk about is the game sequence. And the game sequence is card driven. So uh, the first card out of the deck will be the first card that, that plays. Um, on top of that, there is an event card in there, a single event card, that if you go back to the introduction video will be explained. And we'll see how that works during the course of the day. We have a siesta card in there, which it basically brings the game to a premature halt halfway through a move what we do is here we uh, use the two tea break system and uh, the first tea break card or the first siesta card is a warning and then the second siesta card we put it back into the deck reshuffle and then the second siesta card when that comes out brings the turn or that part of the turn to an end any units that haven't been activated uh, they can under certain circumstances uh, do some things and again we'll go through that as we play the game and then once we've done that part of the turn all morale all shooting all movement is all done for each unit on the turn of its card so there's no fixed um, move sequence in terms of those items what we do have then at the end of that initial phase where we're looking at um, the units moving the final phase we look at reinforcements and that's when we roll to see whether we get any money and if we do get any money then we can uh, buy some reinforcements or some ammunition depending on how the game's going and what our strategy is going to be so um, 
obviously there's nothing on the table at the moment. Both units are going, or so both, both sides are going to enter from the road on their side of the table. And uh, reinforcements, possibility of them coming on elsewhere, but at the moment that's where everyone's going to come on from. So I'm just going to play the first card and then very, very simply have a look at that unit moving, if it is a unit. So the first card out is Poom 1. So that's the Poom Militia. And um, let's have a look at them coming onto the table. So here are the first section of Poo Militia on the starting point and I've just put their activation card next to them just uh, to remind you of which unit this is. And very briefly, the each unit can move, move and shoot um, or stand still, depending on what it wants to do. And the more it moves, the more it affects uh, its ability to shoot. At this moment in time, the Poom are going to be the first unit on the table. So they're not really going to have any problems whatsoever when it comes to determining where they are going to go. Uh, so, maximum move is 9 inches. So we'll just get the magic tape measure out. So 9 inches is going to allow that unit to go into this unit of broken ground here or straight ahead along the road, maybe towards the building, into the cover of the trees, or down the back of the table onto that hill. So, the main objective for the Republicans is the railway station. So, um, although I'm splitting my personality here, as Poom Commander, I am going to send this first unit of infantry across to the railway station. There's nothing fancy about movement uh, distances. You take a third off for anything that isn't normal terrain and that's it. Uh, there's no movement tables or anything like that. It's just nine inches will take me to the bottom of the hill. So I'm just going to move these guys. Formations, there isn't any you can have a maximum of two figures uh, depth for firing and you can uh, oh, I've seen I've got an SMG in there and you can spread your figures out no more than two inches apart each um, but that does thin your fire out quite considerably but gives you an advantage if uh, artillery shell lands on top of you so that's kind of up to yourself but there we go that's the first card activated so there we go, first card done, easy isn't it, these set of rules. Uh, um, don't worry, I'm not going to do every single card, I'm just building up the speed of uh, the instruction as we go along. So Poom 1 has moved, the next card out is Guardia Seville. Um, so let's go around the other side of the table and uh, see those guys come up. Okay, we're on the other side of the table now, and uh, we're looking at the Guardia Seville coming on from their entry point. And we've got exactly the same choices that we had uh, with the Republican unit. Um, in that we've just moved on, we can't see anything. Um, we know our objective is to capture buildings and most importantly the railway station. And looking at nine inches for us, if we go straight down the road, we are just going to be safely in cover behind the trees so we're just going to do that so there we go one thing I did forget uh, and it's not like I wrote these rules or anything but we do track ammunition in Spanish Civil War um, I know we're going to get a few groans there and a few always oh, too complicated ammunition and types of ammunition were extremely important in the Spanish Civil War if you read accounts of the Battle of Jarama, for example, the um, International Brigade British Battalion had massive problems with ammunition. Um, they had boxes of ammunition with different <laughs> calibres in. They had to sit there for hours on end, putting them, hand putting them into um, 
machine gun belts um, as the as the battle was going on, so it can have a massive effect. Supply also would have a massive effect. Um, with certainly this part of the war, um, the nationalists being much better supplied than the republicans. So when a unit comes on to on the table, we roll an average dice, and that gives us the number of ammunition points that that unit will have to play with. To reflect the better supply of the Nationalists in this game, the Nationalists will get plus one onto the roll of the average dice. So let's have a chuck of that. And we've rolled the Magic 5. So the Guardi Seville will get a little Magic small dice next to the unit with the number of um, ammunition points it's got free. Uh, normally when we play games we'll do this with a counter that's flipped over so the opponent can't see but as we're solo gaming and it's a good counter for you to have a look at as well to see what uh, how many points that uh, has got. I'll go back and uh, do the ammunition for the Poom. Obviously not a lot that's happening at the moment. You've seen how movement works. Three, six or nine inches um, and a third off for bad terrain and that's it on your activation of your card. So I'm going to do a few more cards and I'll come back to you once we uh, get to uh, an exciting part in the game. Well we're back in the game a little bit sooner than I thought we were going to be. Um, I've just drawn a couple more cards as you can see on the table here. Um, we've got a second section of Poo Militia uh, have come out and they are dashing towards the building. Uh, they've got four ammunition points. Um, I've rolled the ammunition points for the first unit that came on. They've also got four. And then the Republican Mortar came on uh, as well. So we've got three Republican units on and one Nationalist at the moment. There's just the civilian Guard of Seville hidden behind that wood over there at the moment. Uh, that you can't see and then I drew this card uh, so yes it is Speedy Gonzalez and yes he is Mexican and yes this is the Spanish Civil War it's a joke okay <laughs> apologies if it's offended anyone that he's Mexican and not Spanish I, I, I don't know what you can put on the internet these days without upsetting people but there we go um, so he's fast asleep uh, bless him uh, little known fact actually that um, when he retired from Looney Tunes, uh, Speedy Gon Gonzalez, he did come to Bilbao and set up a Mexican restaurant and retired. And here he is sleeping outside the walls of his restaurant. Believe that, you believe anything. Anyway, so this goes back in the card and we reshuffle. And um, I'll come back to you again at uh, an exciting moment in the first move. So not much more has happened, to be honest. Um, I've brought on um, a section of Legion and the Nationalist Heavy Machine Gun, uh, which has come on the road behind the Guardi Seville. And we've drawn the second Siesta card. So, um, that's that part of the turnover. Normally, if units were on the table and haven't been activated, they would get to have another go, uh, or potentially move, or potentially shoot, depending on where they are. Um, but we're not in that situation. We haven't got, they're not on the table, so they can't be activated. Uh, so that's the end of that part of the turn. So it's uh, for us to move on to the reinforcement phase. So first part of the reinforcement phase is to buy reinforcements. And at the moment, because we're at the end of the first turn, nobody has any money. So nobody can buy any reinforce reinforcements or ammunition at this early stage. Um, so when we come to uh, choosing reinforcements, I'll put up a table on the screen uh, and you can have a look at the choices that are available. But at this moment in time, we're just going to roll to see how much money is generated each uh, this particular turn for the two sides involved. So we've got white dice for the Nationalists and green dice for the Republicans, same as the uh, ammunition markers. And we're just rolling these dice looking for uh, six or more, so 50% chance. So looking at that there, you can see that the Republicans have rolled a four and a two. 
so they haven't got any money at all. And the Nationalists have rolled a nine, a seven, and a four. Each roll over six, so of six or more, will get you ten pesetas, which is these uh, Spanish coins, old Spanish coins, which is uh, pre euros. There we go. Got these off the internet for next to nothing. And uh, so in the Republican bank, there will go two of these. So there we go. 20 pesetas in the Republican bank, ready for the reinforcements next stage. So we've got, that's the end of uh, the first turn. Uh, lots of people didn't get activated there, which is unusual, but it does happen. And uh, we're just going to shuffle the deck now off camera, just so you don't see how bad my shuffling is. And uh, we've got the deck there, and we'll do a bit of a cut. And there we go. We are ready to go for turn two. Very little action, but uh, as I say, I'm just trying to gently bring you into these rules. So first unit activating for turn two is Poom three and I'll just bring those on the ward and as we proceed through turn two I'll come back to you as we get anything exciting. We're six cards into uh, the second move and um, the, we've got another unit of Poom come on as we saw at the start of the move um, we've got another unit of Legion that's just come on. You can just see coming off the road in the far distance. The headquarters unit for the Poom has moved on. and uh, They've hidden in the wood straight away, just in there. The Republican Mortars came out again. and um, They have moved into the wood or to the back of the wood and set up. So they are ready to fire if they can see a target. Uh, Legion 1 are out again, and uh, you just might be able to see them behind the second building. Um, they're just making a beeline for that uh, building, so that's going to be interesting um, with Poom 2 and 3 heading in that direction as well. Um, and then we've got uh, the Nationalist MG card came out, and uh, they've moved up uh, behind the wood on their side of the table. And the reason we've come out now uh, uh, to have a look is because this card has come out. Uh, so we need to have a look at how vehicles work. So I'll go around the other side of the table and uh, we'll bring the UNL35 on. So now the armor's on, um, we'll armor in inverted commas as well. Um, we'll just have a very quick look at how uh, vehicles work in these rules. And this is the bit where probably some people go, oh, can't stand the table and we'll just switch off. Again, as I said in the introductory video, that's absolutely fine. Um, we're quite happy with these rules. We played them, we like them. And I do like a table. I'm old school, I like a table. Uh, I like all the information in one place and I do like a lot of detail when it comes to vehicles. Maybe that's um, my engineering, mechanical background. I don't know, but I particularly like this. Anyway, so if you're still with us uh, and you've not switched off because there's a table involved, um, great. Welcome to old school gaming. Um, so this here's how a vehicle works. And it's very similar in the way to the infantry in that we're looking at threes so it can move a slow pace a medium pace or a fast pace um, each vehicle that um, is in the war um, or was in the spanish civil war is included in the spanish civil war supplement book which you can see in the introductory video go back and have a look if you've not uh, looked at it and each vehicle has a table very similar to this so it shows you the speed it shows you the armour values for front side and rear, depending on hit location. And again, we'll, we'll look at that during the course of, maybe not this game, but one of the, the future games of how that works. It shows you how the weapons are, what weapons it's got, how far they can fire, and the rate of fire. And then underneath, um, it's got penetration value for the weapons uh, that the vehicle has. This... Uh, vehicle has just got a couple of light machine guns and um, the armor value is roughly equivalent to millimeters uh, of armor so as you can see this is basically a tin can with a couple of M lmgs on which is quite sophisticated for the spanish civil war 
So anyway, I'm going to move that on and um, I'm going to move on and go to the uh, look at where we are on the table and make some tactical decisions. So here's the viewpoint looking down the road. Um, UNL will come on um, in the same place. Uh, the, the ground off the main road is not bad going, so I'm not going to lose anything uh, for driving on there. So I can go 8, 15 or 30. If I drive 15, I will have the opportunity to try and spot a unit. If I drive 30, I will literally be driving blind up the road and relatively safe behind that building, but I'm quite um, vulnerable then to close assault. But the infantry is quite far away, so alternatively, I could be quite safe. Um, so that's my plan for now. I'm going to move the UNL up to that building just to give me a bit of uh, full security and fire. It's going to block off the this area here in terms of fire. I can't see anyone because I've moved full speed, so I'm too busy driving and shaking around in my uh, 1930 suspension vehicle to bother looking out of the uh, of the window or the tiny little slit. But that's secured for the nationalists. Uh, this first building unless somebody is going to be very very brave so that's the vehicle out uh, let's draw some more cards and I'll come back to you again when we get something new and the first card out of the bag is snipers after the um, the armoured car that came out for the uh, nationalists snipers both unit snipers move on the same phase snipers normally come on as an event card and they can also leave as an event card and they operate in a very specific way and will explore that as and when they get an opportunity to fire but just for now um, the republicans have got two snipers on the table and they're going to move their nine inch and uh, we'll just carry on drawing cards and we're straight into back um, we've got another uh, special card that we've for the first time and this is an event card the event cards can be used um, or there can be a number of them in the deck depending on how you want to play them we tend to have, for a small game like this we'll just have one event card so we get one event per turn um, if it comes out before the siesta card and uh, sometimes um, we'll put two in three i think we've been up to four and we've had a really really big game going and all this event card is, it's an opportunity to add in some random events to add a little bit of excitement and unpredictability to the game. And what we normally do, the way we do it is we roll 2d6 on each side, no uh, pluses or minuses because some of the event cards can be negative, some can be positive. And whoever gets the highest die roll from 2d6 gets control of the card. They can play it on any unit they like they get control cards uh, but let's see what comes out uh, we'll roll the two dice two green for the republicans two white for the nationalists and it looks like the republicans have won the day five to four so they will get control of this card and this card is a lottery ticket now that is what the uh, that is definitely what the republicans want so that will go to one side to the end of the um reinforcement phase and they'll get some extra die rolls this turn for money and immediately after that the final uh, special card that we've, we've not had out yet uh, the runners card has come out and the the runners um, in this game uh, will activate these units these lovely uh, painted day, uh, donkeys um, that my old mate Dave Parrott did and uh, these act as uh, a representation of a ammunition supply. Um, they can't be targeted individually unless they're accidentally hit by ammunition uh, by artillery. Um, so these wander around the table carrying uh, lots of ammunition. Nobody's bought any ammunition yet, 
but these will both activate, both sides activate on the same card and these will now sit at the entry point uh, awaiting for people to purchase ammunition and ammunition to be sent out to the various parts of the battlefield. So I'll put these runners on the table and uh, play some more cards and come back to you next time something happens. Okay, so here's a look at the table. I'll just move slightly to the right so we've got all the figures in. And uh, we've just come to the end of the normal phase of turn two. Um, the second siesta card has come out. And um, since we were last here, um, we've got the Legion HQ have come on. The last unit of Legion is on the table. So all the Nationalists are on the table. And the Poom 2, the second section of the Poom, has moved into the nearest building. You can see them on the roof. Um, those are, these adobe style buildings aren't particularly true to the whole of Spain. I think it's the Bilbao region where they're quite common. Um, we do like these for these games um, because they're easy to put figures on the roof to show that they're in. So again, I'm sure some people will go, yeah, they're not Spanish. We're happy with them. Thanks very much. Um, and they work really well for games. And I've put loads of Spanish Civil War posters on the side of them. I'm not doing that again. So there we go. Uh, the only unit that isn't out on the table, we've got one section of Poom Militia. Um, but what we can do now um, is have a look at the post-second siesta phase. So once the game turn is over, at the end of the first turn, everything had moved that was on the table. Um, we've still got three cards left in the deck that haven't been activated this turn and if your cards are left in this situation you can do one of two things when your card uh, we just flip through them one at a time everything that is done in this phase is considered simultaneous if there is any shooting and casualties um, but we just go through the cards one at a time to make sure that everyone gets covered you can do one of two things you can either move but you can only move to a better level of cover. So this is in there to stop a unit that's out in the open, its card doesn't come out, and it just stands there. Um, and that wouldn't happen, would it? You, you would move to the nearest cover. Um, it stops people coming out of cover, because you're not going to do that voluntarily, um, but it does allow you to move to a better level of cover so let's uh, so we could do that or the other alternative is you can attempt to fire and the way that that works is you can roll the dice against your basic morale and your cover level and that determines whether you fire or not I do apologize just not the camera there if you do fire you might not actually cause any effect you still lose an ammunition Lab, uh, point so um, that then starts to make you think a little bit more about ammunition and a little bit more about firing but let's see what we've got left in uh, the three cars that we've got we've got Poom 1 Poom 1 is down here they are currently in the open uh, they're in a, although they are covered by trees from over there they are in the open um, so um, they could move if they can move to a better level of cover and with just a slight turn of the camera there we can see that they can go onto the hill um, hills we generally give a level of cover to um, just to reflect the scrub and the nature of the the, the top of a hillside so uh, in this particular case i've given today the hills a cover of value of two and we'll talk about cover values when we come to shoot so they are in a zero cover value moving into a cover value two so they can move Just make sure that you uh, take your counters with you if for uh, whatever you're using for ammunition. And uh, I've also just put a little counter out with a number on just so that uh, my tiny brain will remember what section uh, each one is. Because I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to finish this today and I'm going to need to keep coming back and uh, I'll have forgotten which unit is which uh, in the meantime. So two cars remaining. 
We've got the Guardia Seville, and they are behind the wood, so they can move into the wood because the wood is a cover two and they are in the open which is a cover zero so i'll move those off camera in a second and then finally we've got poom four poom four are off the table and therefore can't do anything so that's the end of the turn and we'll go on to the reinforcements phase so here we go we're into the reinforcement phase for turn two and if you remember from term one, uh, the Republicans, sorry, the, the Nationalists, got 20 Pesaters, which they can put towards uh, some reinforcements if they wish. And uh, I'm just going to put up on screen now the reinforcement list for the Nationalists, which you can see now. Um, looking at the level of ammunition that I have with the units that I have on table, everyone's got five or six turns of ammunition. So I'm happy with that. I don't particularly want to buy am any ammunition at the moment. Um, I am going to save my money and uh, possibly buy something a little bit more exciting later on. But just give me a little bit of flexibility. Um, I've got 20 in the bank. I don't need any ammo. No major concerns at the moment. So I'm not going to spend any money. So we're going to move on to the... Uh, Republicans don't have any money to spend, as you saw they didn't roll anything last week, uh, sorry, last uh, term. So what we do need to do now is we do need to do the roll phase. However, it's always going to be three and two, three for the Nationalists, two for the Republicans, but the Republicans have got a lottery ticket. So they're going to roll a d6. And the Republicans, this turn, We'll get an extra three die rolls. So there we go. Five, three for the Republicans this time. And the event card has been spent, and that will go on the spent event card pile. So let's roll those dice. And, oh, my word. The Nationalists have gotten out. Um, do apologize that's come off a two um two one and one nothing so they've still only got 20 pesetas however the republicans have thrown a blinder they've got an eight and eight a six and eight and a six so they have now got 10 pesetas for each one of those which will give them 50 pesetas to send next turn and uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to spend that on something. So, back to the start of turn three. So here we go, here's the start of turn three. Uh, things are starting to build up now, starting to get to a point where we're going to have some shooting and some action that we're going to need to uh, to go through and talk about. Interesting developments uh, with the lottery ticket and the finances for last turn. And the Republicans are going to have some uh, the ability to spend quite a bit of cash uh, at the end of this turn to uh, bring in reinforcements or whatever they want to do with them, that money. Uh, so uh, let's crack on with turn three and um, get some action. So card one is Poom three. So as before, I'll come back to you when we've got some action in turn three. So we're uh, four cards in, uh, Poom three, has moved up behind uh, the hill next to Poom 2 in the building. Uh, Legion 3 has moved up uh, next to Legion 1. Uh, the Nationalist MG has moved up to the front of the wood and set up a firing position. The next unit out is Republican Mortars. Republican Mortars are set up, so it's time for us to have a look at how indirect fire works. Okay, so we've got an indirect uh, unit working this time. And the first thing that uh, the Republican player would need to do would be to choose a target. Now, his HQ unit is the only unit on the table that can direct artillery. Uh, so uh, they can have um, a observe shot at the armoured car next to the uh, building. All the other other alternative would be an unaimed shot at the woods where the heavy machine gun 
and um, the uh, civilian guard are. So, um, as we've got a potential of an aim shot versus uh, a non-aim shot, uh, I'm going to go for, uh, or attempt to, fire at the armoured car. The advantage of that is that I can see it, which means my deviation will be less. The disadvantage is it's a vehicle, so if I don't hit it, it's going to bugger off. But let's just we're just showing how the game works, so that's the choice I'm going to do. So I'm going to fire a shot at the armoured car. Next, what we need to do is estimate the range, and uh, annoyingly, we play with a guy who uh, is a draftsman who measures things for a living and is extremely accurate. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a draftsman, uh, so I'm going to have a guess at 36 inches and just have a look and see where that is. So I'll measure 36 inches out from the mortar and put my aim point down. And that was spectacularly over, as we can see there. Uh, and I'll just put the marker down and come back to you in a second. So we've moved the camera over to cover the viewpoint now. And um, if you remember the introductory video, we talked about the spin for it application. And this is where you'll need it now. So because the fire is observed, then we will... Um, roll 2d6 if it was unobserved it would be 2d10 and the uh, click on the directional spin for it to see which way it goes and it goes nine inches off to the right so the artillery has landed we've got these little blast templates there this turn and uh, so it's landed in that rough ground there. As you can see, nothing is affected by that. Uh, that could have got quite scary for the nationalists, uh, to be fair, if that had gone in a different direction. Um, with observed fire, that has now used up one of the HQ figures for the poon. So they've only got two actions left for that HQ. That observation takes up one action. So you can see now how a four-figure Legion unit is more flexible than a three-figure poom unit um, so uh, all we do with that is we just um, twist the figure round to the front so that it shows that it's been activated for this turn there's only two actions left with that hq unit so that unit's fired next turn if it fires at the same location it will be 2d6 minus 2 up until the point where it gets on target and then it will always deviate by 1d6 and uh, the spinner each turn until a new location for fire is chosen. Um, so I'll go over to the other side. I'll reduce the. Uh, I'm not going to reduce the mortar fire by one because it's a ranging shot. Once we get on to open target fire, that's when the mortar starts to use its ammunition. Um, but I'll turn the figure around and then we'll do some more cards and I'll come back to when something new happens. And we're straight in with an event card, which we know how they work from the previous turn. So let's just roll the dice and see who gets control of the next event card. So we have six for the Republicans, ten for the Nationalists. So this card will go to the Nationalists. And from the top of the event card, they get a food parcel. The International Brigade has received parcels from home and they would pass all guts checks this turn. However, we've got no International Brigade on table at this moment, so that's just a wasted card, and that will go on the discarded deck. Next card on here will be Legion 2, and I'll come back to you uh, when we've got some action. Okay, so the next unit out of the uh, pile was Poom 2. Um, Poom 2 are currently located in this building here. Uh, lots of guys on the roof. So um, it's going to give us our opportunity to shoot. Now, it's a decision for the Republican player to make because um, we are looking at limited ammunition. So you start to choose whether we're going to fire or not. On top of the building there, you can't see any of the, the Legion coming up behind the building 
uh, and directly in front of them. The only option they've got is firing into the tree line where the Guardi Seville and uh, heavy machine gun unit is. Uh, maximum range for um, rifles is 30 inches in this game. And uh, you can measure before you fire, I'm not particularly dramatised about that. And we're looking at 17, 18 inches as an average. The only difference in this is when you fire at something that is over half range. Um, so we are over half range. Um, we've got four rounds of ammunition and it would be a touch and go decision whether we would bother firing in this situation. But as we're doing a play test, let's fire. So the way you fire, first thing you do is you look at the number of figures you've got and you halve them and you choose the best weapons from those five figures because we've got ten figures in there we'll halve them five figures are going to fire and how many we, we've got a selection of one smg one pistol and uh, eight rifles now the smg and the pistol are going to be out of range um so it's all going to be rifle fire so we're going to fire five rifles we're not moving so we get full fire effect so we get two dice per rifle shot or rifleman firing which for 10 sorry for five guys is going to give us 10 dice nice and easy so there's our 10 dice ready to roll in a second each type of unit has a stat line and if you've played any any games you'll be familiar with what a stat line is very, very basic. Um, each unit has a stat line that contains a shoot factor, a fire factor, a morale factor for soldiers, NCOs and officers. So just put that up on the table while I continue talking now. So as you can see that our militia um, have got a shoot factor of four. Not many factors involved in this. So We've got 10 dice to roll, we're starting on a shoot factor of 4, we are over half range, so the shoot factor drops to 3, and we are firing at something in a 2 cover, so guess what, we need a 1 to hit. Cover is easy, cover will either be 0, the open, 1, rough ground, which are the uh, light coloured, sandy coloured areas that you can see, two which are woods and hills and three which is buildings um so let's roll our dice and see if we get any hits so we've got one hit from those 10 which is uh, statistically perfect so we've got one hit or i prefer to say one on target and we just need to see whether that has caused a casualty or not so to cause casualties you um, need to score six or less on a d10 and that has only one modifier and that modifier is whether you are over half range or not and we are so we will need five or less on this dice to cause a casualty we've got a three so we've caused a casualty on the uh, guardi seville and they will need to, as a result of that, take a guts test or a morale test, as you will probably be familiar with calling them. And to uh, to do that, all we do is we take the guts level. So if you go back to the stats, we'll have a look, put the stats on the screen now for the Guardia Seville. And as you can see, these guys are slightly better. They are shoot five, fight four, Soldier morale 5, NCO morale 8, Officer morale 10. So, morale checks, very straightforward. Take the highest uh, number or the highest person who is uh, with the unit. Um, in this case, it's an NCO. There are no uh, Guardisville officers on the table. If he was an officer, uh, then he would be part of a HQ unit. And he would need to be within 10 inches 
i.e. the stat for that particular officer and if he did use his um, factor for the morale test then he would have to turn one of his HQ figures round very similar to what we did with the um, Poom earlier on when their HQ did a uh, spotting for the mortar. So let's do our uh, test. We are a basic eight, we are in a two cover. So we add to that and rifle shots don't give you any morale minuses and you, you we've got no minuses for casualties because we need two casualties to get a minus one. So um, a 10 will give us a pin and uh, we've rolled a six. So uh, those guys are happy enough uh, with one shot. I'm going to take one casualty off and uh, that was the first shot of the game. We also need to remember to reduce the artillery, uh, sorry, the ammunition dice from four to three on the unit that has fired. So there we go, back to the cards and let's see what happens next. Okay, um, I'm not gonna bother with spotting in this particular game, um, but normally um, only vehicles would need to spot infantry. Uh, but infantry when it's fired is visible so the infantry the poom from the building has fired the card that's come out is nationalist armor so i am going to use my um, two light machine guns on that vehicle uh, to fire at the uh, building that the poom have just fired out of so that will give me six dice We um, three per light machine gun. It does say four on the uh, vehicle sheet that we looked at earlier on, but we just we drop um, all rates of fire on there down by one. So we've got six dice. Um, our shoot factor for any vehicle is a five, and we are firing at something in a three cover. So we need twos, and we are under half range, so we still need twos. So firing at the uh, Poom in the building. Uh, fairly effective so far. We've got a 112 and a 4 and a 5 off camera. It's a light machine gun under half range, so we need sixes uh, or less to cause casualties. And we've rolled, would you believe, uh, two tens and a one. So we've got one casualty from the Poom on the building. and they will need to take a guts check. The uh, guts check for those guys, um, they, their officer is more than seven, sorry, more than eight inches away. He's in the wood, so he can't give them any benefit. So the best soldier that they've got in there, uh, let's see if he was a casualty, is a sergeant. We need a 10 to kill the sergeant. And one, so it wasn't the sergeant. So the NCO, um, is a basic six. Um, they are in hard cover, which is three. Easy, isn't it, with the morale and the cover being the same. So their basic is six plus three cover is nine uh, minus one for being shot out by a light machine gun. So uh, less than eight passes. 10 oh dear so that's an automatic pin so that unit will gain a red meeple and it is currently pinned uh, 10 always fails regardless of circumstances uh, so uh, we've got a pinned poom unit in that building let's see if that uh, develops during the course of this turn okay the next card out is uh, snipers uh, this is something that we've not uh, played with before so the snipers have come out uh, one of the Republican snipers has moved up on the left flank with Poom uh, 3 uh, is, is hidden uh, however there's a the, the other sniper had already set up in the wood with the HQ and his sniper rifle has a range of 48 inches which is uh, he's got a unit of Legion in his sights uh, in the distance in some light cover uh, which we can let's uh, use the magic of the camera 
to just show them off there in the distance if you can see them to the right of the armoured car. It's a, a bit of a shot but I, I will uh, I take it snipers don't have ammunition limits and um, it's just a way of showing how snipers works. So when a sniper activates if he's intending to fire he will roll um, one dice. So he rolls a three. The side he is um, firing against will roll 2d6 and they roll a five and the five. So the possibilities uh, for here are if the sniper rolls higher than both the defender's dice he can fire and he will not be seen when he fires. If the sniper's dice is higher than one of the two dice then he can fire but there is a chance that he will be seen. If as in this case both the defender's dice are higher than the sniper's dice then the sniper looks at the situation ducks back into cover and decides not to fire. So the sniper won't be firing in this instance but it's given us an opportunity to talk through how that particular um, card works. So we're, we're getting through these rules nice and quickly and uh, there's just a couple of cards left in the deck so let's see what we've got. So the, the turn ended there's only two cards left Poom 1 and Siesta and uh, Poom 1 have just uh, moved up into the railway station they're just entering the building at the end of the phase and uh, I'll just walk the camera around uh, with shaky cam obviously to show you where we are at this stage of the game at the end of turn three. Um, we've got the Poom 1 in the railway station and uh, we've got Poom 4 uh, finally come on the table at the end of his turn and they are uh, just sheltering at the back of the wood at the moment. We look into the wood, um, we've got a sniper in there with the Poom headquarters and in the back is the uh, mortar unit. Our runners, our donk ammunition donkey has not moved yet, nobody's bought any ammunition so they've not gone. We have Poom 2 on the rear building and they have been pinned by fire from um, the, the armoured car which we can just see behind that building. And to finish the Republican side off, uh, we have got uh, Poom 3 and a sniper who are just moving up behind the hill on the left flank. We'll go around the other side of the table and we'll look at where the Nationalists are. So looking from the Nationalist side of the table, uh, they've left the left flank uh, fairly bare and um, in a fairly bold move the Guardia Seville have dashed forward into the single storey vehicle with their, their building with the veranda. Um, be interesting to see what they will do from there. In the central woods we have got a unit of Legion with a heavy machine gun and the Legion HQ going behind. Uh, the Legion uh, are looking at this wood as a, a decent position because they can move up to behind the building uh, in one move if required. Behind the building we have a section of Legion um, that have moved up to the side of the building ready to enter up next turn uh, sheltering behind the armoured car. We've got the uh, mortar aim point uh, for the Republicans and then just at the back of the table we've got uh, Legion 3 um, that uh, came on the table late and is just moving up. So there we go, there's the uh, overall look of the table at uh, the end of turn three and uh, we'll just do the reinforcement phase. So the reinforcement phase, um, the Republican player has decided that his biggest threat is the armoured car. At the moment, other than close assault in it, he's got no way that he can destroy that. So he's spent 20 Pesetas on a Dynamontero and um, he's also aware that one of his units at least is struggling a little bit with ammunition um, so he has spent another 20 pesetas on 10 um, ammunition points the 
Nationalist player decided that uh, he's only got 20, so he's not going to uh, make any purchases this turn. So that leads us on to the throw for more money. And once again, the Republicans have got 20 and the Nationalists 10. So the extra dice isn't really helping the Nationalists at the moment. So there we go. That's the end of turn um, three. The Nationalists have 30 and Pesaters and the Republicans have 30 Pesaters to go into the reinforcement phase of next turn. So here we go, let's start turn four. And uh, as always, I'll flick through the cards and we'll come and join the game when we get some exciting stuff. Card one is Poom three. And Poom three are behind a hill uh, on the other side of the table. So we'll go and move them and we'll come back when we've got some action. Second card in is the event card. And uh, I did notice, uh, we're on another day filming here. Uh, I did notice when I did the uh, sort of the, the, the notes notes on the screen uh, that I got the last event card wrong. Uh, the lottery ticket should have gone to the nationalists, but uh, it's made the game a little bit more easier. So uh, the Republicans have rolled eleven, and the nationalists have rolled seven. So this is definitely going to the Republicans, whatever this is. And the next event card is that. Uh, so there is the. Um, the Republicans have got a free pass to a guts check, and the, the player will hold on to that card uh, till the end of the game if he wants to and use it. And I'll just leave that um, flipped up next to the um, entry point. The opponent wouldn't know that the, the person had that, they would just know they would have a card in hand. And there's other cards like Challenge Initiative that people can hold, and Medic cards as well. Um, so um, that will just sit uh, ready for when it's in use. Let's uh, play some more cards. Uh, four cards in, the Siesta card has come out. First Siesta, so that's going to go back into the pile and um, get shuffled in. Um, sniper card came out, one of the snipers moved up uh, around the side of Poom 3 in the hill. Um, and the other one uh, attempted to fire uh, but uh, got spotted and ducked back behind cover again. So he's not doing very well at the moment. Event card we've done and Poom 3... First card that came out, they just moved up, up onto the hillside uh, with the small, small two houses. So let's uh, shuffle the deck with the uh, event card in. Uh, sorry, the siesta card in. And uh, give it the old cutting of the deck. And first card out is Poom 1. So this is, uh, is worth watching because Poom 1, if you remember, were pinned on top of a building. So let's go and uh, move the camera and have a look at how that works. Uh, my apologies, I've got my poom mixed up. Um, so uh, poom one is actually the one that's dashed across the table to get into the railway station. And they are gonna dash into the railway station, um, which is three inches off to uh, put a building, get into a building, which will mean that they could only fire at half effect at full range. Um, they've got these guys um, in the building. The uh, Guardi Seville in the building. Just lift that up there. It's not working very well today, I do apologise. Uh, they've got the Guardi Seville in the building, but they are over half range and they've only got four rounds of ammunition. Um, with at least six rounds of the game to go. So uh, they're just going to move into that building. So we'll do that. Okay, so we've had a, a little bit of uh, movement around. Uh, the Republican mortars have fired again and missed. A little bit closer this time, um, which has uh, prompted Region 3 to move out of the cover it was in and, and uh, move towards the buildings. So the next card out is Legion 2. Legion 2 are in this wood here you can just see them with the heavy machine gun uh, they don't have a light machine gun um, but they do have a target and that target is those guys over there that have just come into focus the pinned poom unit in the building we are over half range we know we're 
17, 18 centimetres. And um, we're going to fire because we've got five units of ammunition. And uh, even if the turn, even if the game goes all the way to eight turns, um, we've, we've got enough ammo. So we're going to fire. We're going to try and get some casualties. So in that unit, we have got one guy with a pistol and everyone else has got uh, rifles. So we're going to fire uh, we're going to fire four rifles, aren't we? Because we're going to get the, the best advantage from that. We are uh, shoot five, firing into cover three, and um, that, so that's a, a two, but we're over half range. So again, we're on ones. It's not a brilliant shot, um, but uh, let's go for it. So, eight dice. Need him once, and we've got a hit, and that hit doesn't uh, convert to a casualty. So, bit of ineffective fire from the Legion boys there. Uh, we'll drop there. Ooh, we'll drop there. Ammo counter down from five to four, and uh, that's it. They fired. And things are really hotting up now in turn four. We're getting lots of shooting, and uh, hopefully getting the hang of the shooting by now. And uh, Poom Four, uh, who were at the back of the hill, just by the Republican entry point, have moved on and gone into the wood and gone to the edge of the wood. So they um, have effectively used two of their three actions, but they have five ammunition. So they've got quite a lot of ammunition, and. They've got the very brave or very stupid, the leaders applicable, um, Gardy Seville in the building in front of them. So because they've moved twice, they can fire at half effect at half range. And they're going to do that. They may as well. Um, they're not particularly brilliant troops. Um, they've only got a, a shoot of four. And they're going to be firing into heavy cover, which you remember is three. So four minus three is one. And we only get one shot per rifle. Got a unit of 10, so if we had a submachine gun in there, we probably would be worth firing at this range, but we haven't. So we're just going to get five dice and we're needing ones. And would you believe it? We've got one. So let's see if we get a casualty. We are six or less because we are uh, within we're short range. And we've got a two, so we've got a casualty on the Guardia Seville. And they have lost one already. So it's a, a, a one to see whether it's the sergeant that's killed. And it isn't. It's a five. So the Guardi Seville uh, are uh, getting shot away rather rapidly. We're down to six from uh, eight. And uh, they need to take a guts check. They've lost a casualty. So we Guardi Seville are a eight for an NCO. We are in a building, which is an 11, because we've got plus three for that. But we've now lost two casualties, so that's a minus one. So we're on a 10. A 10 is a pin. And we've rolled a six. So the Guardi Seville um, are as happy as they can be being shooted at. And uh, we will drop the ammunition uh, down to four on Poom. And we'll carry on to the next card. And not good for the Nationalists, uh, the next card is Siesta, which uh, is the end of normal turn four. And um, that's a big bonus for the Republicans because neither the armoured car or the heavy machine gun have activated this turn. So uh, they've got away <laughs> with a few casualties. Um, they've not had an opportunity to unpin um, their unit in the building so that's the disadvantage for the Republicans uh, but we're now going to move through the cards and uh, do the post end of turn phase and runners are a specialist card so they don't they don't go anywhere Poom 2 is in the building but is pinned it can't move to a higher level of cover it's in the highest it can be and it can't fire because it's pinned, so Poom 2 is not doing anything. Guardi Seville 1 are going to fire. They are 
um, within half range, well, they're going to roll to see if they can fire. Uh, they may as well because they've got this unit of poom in the hedge in front of them um, that's quite close so they may just want to do that and this is the first time that we've had this uh, situation where somebody can fire during a um, post siesta phase so what they need to do is they need to use their basic so that's for their soldier so their basic soldier is a five and then modify that for cover plus three for the heavy cover so we're looking at eight and we roll a d10 and we roll a six if it's under that number for reserve fire they just fire as normal if it's equal they fire as if they'd crawled so they'd fire at half effect uh, a normal range one higher they fire half effect half range and if it's two or more they fire but it has no effect whatsoever and you just reduce the ammunition level so you can see it's a bit of a gamble if you've got good troops in good cover they're going to fire most of the time bad troops in no cover forget it unless you really really got loads of ammo or you, you, you're gambling so the guard of seville are going to fire and i'll move the camera down a bit closer to the action for that okay so the process is the same as we've done before for firing half the number of men in the unit can fire uh, so in this particular case we are looking at uh, three men because we were down to six with the guardy civil we've taken some casualties and we are six inches away so we are very very short range so half the guys can fire but we've got an smg in there and an smg has a higher rate of fire uh, an smg fires three dice instead of two so we are going to fire the SMG and two rifles so that's going to give us a total of two rifles two dice each one SMG three dice so we're going to get seven dice rather than six we are a shoot five and we are firing into a wood so we are going to get threes as a hit and uh, uh, I don't think these will come into camera but let's see so the rifle shoot and get three hits and the SMG shoots and gets one hit. So we're close range. So the rifles with their three hits um, kill two and the SMG kills one. So that is three casualties from the poom. And before we work out the poom morale, I'll drop down the ammunition on that unit there. So you can see we're starting to, uh, it can get quite nasty very, very quickly. So let's have a look at the uh, poom morale. Now we'll just uh, swing down and have a look at them in there. And uh, in this situation here, um, we've got the officer. The officer is within. The officer is an eight, and he's within eight inches. And we we've used one of the figures from this unit here to um, activate the or to spot for the mortars. So we've got two figures left. So we can use one of them to uh, affect the morale on this particular unit so that chap there with the book he's, he's telling them don't run away so he is a eight and we are in a wood so we are 10 we have lost three casualties so that drops down to a nine and there are no uh, morale modifiers for the weapons that have fired at them so the poom four will remain unpinned on a nine or a ten and they've rolled a two so they're quite happy with that they're quite happy with those three casualties they've lost in a turn and uh, that's the shooting for the guardia seville let's go back to the rest of the cards in the post siesta phase so flicking through the rest of the cards we've got legion hq they are in the back of the wood and they're going to move into the wood so uh, i'll just put that one side and do that off camera 
uh, you really don't need to see me moving figures. Uh, Nationalist armour is a specialist support weapon and can't move after the second siesta. As is Republican anti-tank, it's off table anyway. That is the uh, Dynamonteros that the uh, Republicans bought last term. Legion 1 are behind the building in a zero cover. So they are going to move into the better cover, into the house. So again, I'll do that after uh, siesta. Poom HQ have already activated two of their three uh, people. They could move slightly, but there's no point. They'll just stay in the in the uh, wood. So I'll move all their figures to facing forward again, so we know that they are ready to activate next turn. And the Nationalist MG is a specialist unit, and it can't do anything. So I'll do those moves, and then I'll come back with a reinforcement phase. So turn four and uh, we're just going to do the reinforcement phase so purchasing things first and the nationalists have got 30 and the republicans have got 30 so the nationalists have decided to uh, hold on to their money they are hoping to save up for another heavy machine gun um, or possibly a, a heavy mortar um, there's some concentrations of figures that would be quite juicy if we could get a mortar on um, so that's what they're doing so they're not going to spend and the republicans are still very worried about this armored car and they've only got one anti-tank uh, dynamo uh, so they're going to buy another one so 20 percenters goes back in the pot and a new dynamo tarot will appear on the entry point hopefully it'll come on next phase so let's roll for some more money and the republicans have got 10 percenters taking them back up to 20 and the nationalists have got 20 which will take them to 50 which will allow them to buy either a mortar or a heavy machine gun next turn so that's the reinforcements and that's the end of turn four Turn five, coming next.